on the uh, news. Mm-hmm. And in my opinion, they, they have an extremely serious situation at this nuclear power plant. Okay. Um, so my speculation is they were venting um, the steam in order to try to cool the reactor. Unfortunately, with, without power, they don't have a lot of the normal instrumentation that they would have. They can't monitor things to the same degree. They don't even have their backup power. I mean, they basically have the bare minimum instrumentation that's provided by whatever battery power they have left. Um, and, and my guess is, and it, and it was reported in the news, that they had a hydrogen, hydrogen explosion. Okay. Um, so, so they obviously um, uh, had hydrogen and other gases um, that were generated that built up to an explosive level. And if you, if you look at the photos, the entire um, building surrounding the reactor, the only thing left of it is the steel frame. The entire building has collapsed. Now, that would normally be called the auxiliary building. And that building actually does house a lot of the emergency systems for the reactor. I so, see. Uh, I think we have a very, very serious situation at this power plant where the entire auxiliary building has been destroyed. Um, according to the report, the containment is intact. So if there has been any release of radioactivity, it's been very minor to yes. this point. But they have got to find a way to um, get some electricity and cool that reactor. And the last report I saw said that their plan was to use seawater. So obviously they're going to get some temporary pumps. They're going to use seawater uh, mixed with boron. Uh, boron is a um, uh, substance that will absorb neutrons, uh, very you know, very similar to, to borax that you could go buy to wash your clothes with, that will keep the reactor from going critical again when they add the cold seawater. Yes. So even even though the control rods have been fully inserted, um, when you add um, cold water, cold cold water is denser than warm water, mm-hmm. and it it um, can cause the the neutrons that are still bouncing around the reactor to moderate to a, uh, a speed at which, so moderate means slow down, right. to a speed at which um, they could uh, strike the fuel and cause a fission. Okay. We obviously don't want any more fission because that generates more heat, and we certainly don't want the reactor to go critical because that generates a lot of heat. Um, and uh, critical is not uh, the bad word that you see in the news where you say, oh, the reactor's going to be critical. When it operates, it's normally critical. Right. Um, all, crit- all critical means is it has a self-sustaining reaction, which is what you need to operate. Okay. Um, what we wouldn't want it to do is go to a terminology called super critical. That would be really bad. But in any event, when you add the cold water, if you don't add the boron, then you have the potential of actually causing the fission level to go up in the reactor and more heat to be generated, which you don't want to do. I see. Um, this is, you know, beyond the last resort um, to do this at a nuclear power plant. To use seawater to cool it. So what yeah, do you think... I think they're, they're basically down to, their, to the last option here. So what do you think is the... The best case scenario for this plant, and and added to that question, what do you think, think is the I worst case the scenario? Case scenario? The best case scenario is that you know the military um, get the generators on site with some emergency pumps, and they're able to rig up um, a cooling system to cool that reactor. Okay. Uh, to keep it cool, and they're going to have to cool it for several days before it gets to the point where the heat is decayed off. Um, obviously, the plant um, is destroyed, and uh, I'm sure it will, you know, have to be decommissioned. The, okay. the question is, how much um, additional damage is there at the site? Because there's actually six nuclear reactors at that same site, and two more that were planned or are under construction. I see. So, so this is just one that's been failing. This is this is just one of six um, reactors at that site that were were um, in commercial operation. Oh, that's scary. So that there could be trouble with the other ones. The the question is: as has any as a result of this explosion, has any damage occurred in any of the other adjacent reactors? And um, also, what is what is the situation of the additional reactors? Right. So, if they don't cool them, them it seems up, like this, the same thing could happen to them. It, 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 they they would have the same problems. So a couple of the plants were shut down for maintenance. Yes. So. They're probably less problem- problematic because their cores would have um, cooled down. But the ones that were operating at the time that the earthquake occurred um, could could all be um, a concern. So I, I guess the final question I have for you is, 
Do you think that nuclear power plants should be built in an earthquake-prone area such as Japan? Well, I think it's I think it's important. Um, I think it's important um, for the nuclear industry to be uh, unemotional unemotional about what has happened here. Um, so, like I said, it does appear that all of the design features that were required for the earthquake function and the plant was going through uh, a normal shutdown sequence. Um, obviously, um, when the tsunami came, that was something that was not designed for because it, it flooded uh, the location where the emergency diesel generators were and, and caused them to lose all power. And we're now in a scenario that's uh, well, be, well beyond any design contingencies that were designed for that plant. So I think the nuclear industry has got to take a serious look at what has occurred in Japan. And I, I think, we, um, although nuclear power is an important source of electricity, I think we have to seriously question um, any plants that are located next to the ocean. And yes. the worst case scenario for this type of uh, event, an earthquake followed by a tsunami, as to the impact that it would have on that plant and on the emergency backup system. Right. Clearly, in this case, this was not taken into account. And the, the net result is um, we, have, we have a nuclear power plant that appears to be very, very close to a core meltdown. And what would a core meltdown lead to? I mean, is, is this going to be contained? Is there any chance that this is going to be like a Chernobyl-type situation? I mean, I know that's a different scenario, but is this, you know, is there a potential for a large radiation leak here? So you, you ask a good question, and that's probably, probably one that's on the mind of the public. So the, the first thing is, is this is a different scenario from what happened at Chernobyl. Uh, and let me just explain a little bit. Uh, Chernobyl reactor was a completely different type of design than those that we typically have in Western society. That was a um, graphite cooled, graphite moderated reactor. Excuse me, graphite moderated reactor. Um, and uh, the, probably the, the, the big difference um, between either a pressurized water reactor or a boiling water reactor like we have in the West is a water cooled reactor is what we call inherently stable. Okay. So in this boiling water reactor, even though um, it's not good that the core would, would not be cooled, as the water level drops and you generate steam, yes, st the, the steam is less dense than the water. So um, that means that there's less molecules of water to moderate or slow down the neutrons. So it, when a steam void forms, it actually causes the power level to, to drop in that vicinity or the heat generation to drop in that vicinity. The, the problem you have, of course, is you need you do need to cool the reactor because you have all this residual heat. Okay, but, yes. But a pressurized or boiling water reactor is inherently stable as opposed to the Chernobyl design, which is inherently unstable. I see. Um, the, the other big difference is all Western reactors uh, have to have a containment building. Okay. And so according to the news report, although the auxiliary building has been destroyed, the containment uh, or steel liner has not been destroyed. So that's still intact. So in theory, um, as long as they can maintain the pressures in that and there should be uh, relief valves on that uh, to maintain the pressure, even if the, the core was to melt, um, the vast majority of the radioactivity should be contained within that containment building. At Chernobyl, we didn't have that. So when the core melted and caught on fire, the all the radioactivity was spread to the atmosphere and to the countryside. I see. In this case, that should not occur. However, however, um, you know, again, we're beyond the worst case scenario here, where, you know, the last resort now is to try to rig something up to use seawater to cool the plant, and the auxiliary building with all the safety systems has been destroyed. Well, we'll just keep our fingers crossed, and I hope that there are a lot of nuclear engineers and military people really working hard to keep this from being an even worse disaster than it is already. Thank you very uh, much, think, Dad, for um, – oh, sorry, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, it's obviously a very um, grave situation. However, um, I, I would say the one, the one good thing is um, Japan has uh, many, many nuclear power plants, and they have a lot of nuclear experts in that country. So um, in addition to the help and expertise that they can get from um, the U.S. and other 
uh, folks that have a lot of nuclear experience. They have a, a lot of their own people that have a lot of expertise. And um, I'm sure that they are doing uh, everything that they can. But again, I, I do have to emphasize that I think this is an extremely serious situation. Okay. Thank you so much, Dad, for all of your insights. I'm really glad that I have a Dyla nuclear engineer in my family. Um, I'll welcome. get this posted, and hopefully this will answer some questions that some people have been having. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. Bye, Dad.